Howdy, Sam Flipping Science, looking at zinc production. So you need to be able to describe, with the aid of equations, the production of zinc from its ore. Um, zinc is produced from a mineral called sphalerite, so here's a picture of sphalerite down here, or zinc blend, which is a combination of several different minerals. And the way it's produced is a zinc sulfate solution is electrolyzed. So we're going to go through the steps required to make refined zinc from uh, sphalerite. First step, um, the ore is crushed and ground to increase its surface area, so it starts off as larger rocks and then they get ground down into uh, powder. Increasing the surface area increases the rate of reaction. The crushing, so here's a picture of a crusher here. This uh, produces pieces that are about two centimeters in size. The grinding, um, which can use a ball mill like this, uh, that can produce uh, 200 micron size particles. Then we go on to froth flotation, which is the concentration step. So the powder from the grinding mill is placed in a froth flotation tank. So here's a picture of what a tank looks like. Um, the powder is mixed with water and frothing agents as well as collectors. Uh, which are sodium ethyl xanthate and potassium isopropyl xanthate, which are fun to say. So how do the xanthates work? Well, they act like soap anions. They have a negatively charged head, so here's a picture of one over here, negatively charged head and a non-polar tail. Um, the zinc sulfide grains that are made up, so the sphalerite, um, they're made up of zinc ions and sulfide ions stuck together. So the negative part of the uh, xanthate becomes attracted to the zinc, ion in the uh, zinc sulfate uh, ionic compound. Um, that's through electrostatic attraction. Um, the xanthates aren't attracted to the gang, which is silicon dioxide, because the gang is a neutrally charged substance. So because there's no positive, uh, positive end for the uh, negative part of the xanthate to attach to, um, they don't get attached. So the silicates, the gang, they fall down to the bottom of the tank. Um, what you get is a micelle being produced, so you have these non-polar tails sticking out with the negative ends sticking to the zinc ions in the zinc sulfide. Air is blown through the mixture, and when the air is blown through the mixture, the hydrophobic tails of the uh, xanthates, they get attached to the air bubbles. And the air bubbles are less dense than the uh, rest of the mixture, so they float to the top. So at the top you get this frothy mix, which you can kind of see a little bit of the froth down here. The frothy mix um, which is the bubbles, air bubbles, uh, with the uh, grains of zinc sulfide attached to them. Um, you skim that froth off and then that goes on to further processing. The gang, which was the silicates, they sink down to the bottom of the tank. And by doing this process, you um, get a concentrate which has about 50% zinc sulfide, which is much higher than the mineral that you started with. Now here come the equations. So zinc sulfide is roasted in air. Um, and that converts zinc sulfide to uh, zinc oxide and sulfur dioxide. So zinc sulfide plus oxygen goes to zinc oxide plus sulfur dioxide. Um, that sulfur dioxide that's produced is used to make sulfuric acid via a process called the contact process. And that sulfuric acid is handy because we can then use that to convert the zinc oxide to zinc sulfate. Um, zinc sulfate is soluble in water, and that's going to be important for the electrolysis step. Um, Another process that occurs is the zinc powder is added to the uh, mix to displace um, less active metal iron impurities that are found there, such as silver, cadmium, and copper. The way this works is the zinc is uh, more active than the less active metal iron. That means the less active metal iron gets reduced to um, its solid form and zinc ions are being produced. And this is handy because a, you get rid of impurities, and B, you, um, you're not losing any zinc in this process. So the zinc solid that you add in becomes zinc ions, which can then be electrolyzed later on. Um, the silver, cadmium, copper, and other impurities, they can be collected and processed, and they might be used for another step. The silver might be collected, for example, because it's quite valuable, and same with the copper. The final step is electrolysis of zinc sulfate solution. So the zinc sulfate solution produced from the zinc oxide being dissolved in sulfuric acid is electrolyzed. Um, and this is what the electrolysis cell looks like. So the anode is made of uh, lead and the cathode is made of aluminium. What happens in the reaction is the water is oxidized, producing oxygen gas, hydrogen ions and electrons. At the cathode, the zinc ions that are present in the zinc sulfate solution are reduced to zinc metal. So zinc ions are reduced from the electrons that are produced from the oxidation of water and you get zinc being produced. 
So overall reaction is zinc plus water goes to zinc plus oxygen plus hydrogen ions. So let's have a look at some questions. Um, you're told the steps here in this question here, so the production of zinc occurs in the steps below, so the roasting of the metal zinc sulfide in air, production of sulfuric acid, conversion of zinc oxide to zinc sulfate, purification of zinc sulfate, reduction of zinc sulfate. So in step one, the roasting of the mineral zinc sulfide in air produces zinc oxide and sulfur dioxide, write an equation for that. Okay, so we've got zinc sulfide, which was ZNS, uh, that's reacting with air, so that's going to be the oxygen in the air, not the nitrogen. Uh, it's producing zinc oxide and sulfur dioxide, SO2. So now I need to balance that. Uh, one zinc, one zinc, one sulfur, one sulfur, two oxygens, three oxygens, so that's going to be annoying. Uh, let's start by doubling zinc sulfide. That means we're going to have to double that one. So now we're going to have to, we've got two S's there. Double that one as well. So how many oxygens do we have now? So one, two, three, four, five, six. So three, so we need three oxygen gases. So two zinc sulfides plus three oxygen gases goes to two zinc oxide plus two sulfur dioxide. Next part says in step three, zinc oxide reacts with sulfuric acid to produce zinc sulfate. Write an equation for this reaction. So we've got uh, zinc oxide, so ZNO, reacting with sulfuric acid to produce uh, zinc sulfate, ZNSO4. Um, what else? Uh, metal oxide, basic oxide. So we're going to get, well, I think, water being produced as a byproduct. So zinc oxide, one zinc, one zinc, one oxygen, five oxygens, five, four, uh, five, four, five oxygens, yep. Uh, two hydrogens, two hydrogens, and there we go. So zinc oxide plus sulfuric acid goes to zinc sulfate plus water. Now this question says in step five, zinc sulfate solution is reduced using uh, electrolysis. Electrolysi <laughs> electricity for this electrolysis is produced by the combustion of fossil fuels. First part says, state how the use of electrolysis suggests that the production of zinc from zinc sulfate is non-spontaneous. Um, because it's electrolysis, you're shoving in electricity to get the reaction to occur. So you're forcing the, uh, the reaction to go in the non-spontaneous direction because you're force, uh, putting in energy to cause the reaction to occur. So that's the way I would answer that one. So because electricity is being used to cause the reaction, that suggests that it's non-spontaneous. Spontaneous reaction wouldn't require electricity to um, force the reaction to occur. So today on Flipping Science, we looked at how zinc is produced. That's it for Flipping Science today. See ya.